Hi, this is the advisor with Stacy Chalemi, the founder of the completeherbalguide.com. Today I'm very excited because we have a, a very wonderful guest that has some really uh, informative information that's really exciting to me. She's the author and the expert in the fields of plant and vibrational medicine. Adora is a visionary and uh, nascent uh, arena of quantum uh, Alchemy, a transformative evol evolutionary path for self-mastery, which facilitates healing at the DNA level. She interwines with the divine knowledge and the ancient wisdom of historic philosophy and psycho-spiritual dynamics, essential oils, and energy medicine. Through her 20 plus years as a facilitator, educator, formulator, and entrepreneur, she is the co-author of Detox, Nourish, activate plant and vibrational medicine for energy mood and love it's a revolutionary guide to healing the dna level for master self-mastery named one of the most notable books in 2021 Adora has been mentioned in um, Women's Health Magazine, uh, Martha Stewart, CNN, Healthline, and very many other prominent press outlets. And I even have her book, and I love it. I read it recently, and I am in love with her book. It's an amazing book. So, Adora, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and tell them, you know, who you are and, you know, give them all the great information so they, they know more about you. Thanks, Stacy. That's such a beautiful introduction, and I'm thrilled that you enjoyed the book. Um, so essentially, I'll just start with a little story. So when I was young, I loved being outdoors. I spent the majority of my time in nature connecting with the plants and the trees and the flowers and the birds and butterflies. I even used to collect worms. I know that's a little bit strange, but... <laughs> But I did, and it was truly where I felt the most myself, the most at home, if you will. Yeah. Um, the deepest sense of peace and solace. And, and it was where everything was alive and harmonious and had meaning. And, um, you know, flash forward into later in my life and in my career, it's not surprising that I've made my career path out of working with elements of the natural world. Right. And especially how they can bring us relief, how they can bring us healing, transforma transformation, awakening, right. mm -hmm. um, elevation, and great joy especially to aspects that we carry of adversity in our lives, because we've all experienced some degree of adversity and myself is, my journey is no different. Uh, it's unique to me, but, but we all share uh, similar common bound, uh, bonds of experience in life. And so my early childhood dynamics, there was a lot of stress um, in my home and I developed uh, chronic and acute anxiety and depression in my adolescence. Later, um, I developed bronchitis that I would get twice a year, uh, brought about by allergies, and later endometriosis in my late teens and early 20s. And in fact, my doctor wanted to do a hysterectomy when I was 21. And, and so these uh, kind of moments in time, markers in time, if you will, of adversity and my my own physio physiological response to the stress in my environment led me to come back to nature, to come back to the plants, to come back to the medicines, to come back to the vibrational aspects um, that are available to all of us to find a sense of connection, but more than that, a sense of meaning and fulfillment in our lives, right? Where we can understand our path and our purpose, uh, which takes time, right? It's a, a journey of a lifetime, but these tools and elements of the natural world and many of the ancient esoteric philosophies are just as relevant today and perhaps even more so as we uh, look to disconnect from things like the overuse of our media, right? And whether we're on the computer or we're on the phone and ways that we can come back and really re reconnect with ourselves because we can't reconnect with each other. We can't reconnect with our 
passion and purpose in life until we come and bring our focus inward. And that has really been the crux of my journey. So, so many people, they search their entire lives to try to figure out what their true passion, what their true meaning in life, what was their purpose? And how does a person actually, you know, in this world where everything is go, go and, and life in, so there's, like you mentioned, there's so many technical, you know, uh, different devices out there. Everybody's involved. They can't let go of their phone. How does a person when they're just like lost in life or they just, you know, they trying to figure out what their purpose in his life. Sometimes people hop from job to job, you know, how does a person figure out what their true purpose is in, in life? This is the trillion dollar question, right? So, so I think we have to start at this misnomer. I believe that we're misguided in the idea that we are these physical beings that are trying to determine if we have a spiritual connection, what that connection is, is that real? Does anything exist outside and beyond us? Right. And so we're looking to prove that through science and we're looking to determine, is that valid? I believe the truth is that we are these vast spiritual beings that have chosen to come into the limitation of this form to learn how to master the game of life and to create a life beyond limitation. So if we can invite in that idea Mm -hmm. into our being right into our mind into our consciousness then it really opens up a whole number of other questions right and when we become curious is when we become when we open our ability to expand the mind because it's a really our mind that says i can only um do this maybe maybe in my family lineage someone has been in this industry for many generations, or right. we've had this belief system, like you have to work hard to be successful, right? right? Or we don't show, in this family, we don't show our emotions, we show love through buying gifts, whatever right. it may be, right? If we can open our minds to the idea that we're limited in our thinking, in our perception of reality, in our perception of ourselves, because ultimately we are capable of so much more than we're ever taught and that we're ever led to believe. Right. We're capable of so much more in one lifetime. And how we carve out our niche in the world is based upon us. So, <laughs> so another idea around this kind of curiosity and questioning is the idea of life itself of, or of creation. And I think this is really important because if we look at life, as a form of creation, right. we look at creation as being co-creation, right? Right. And that removes the premise that we are victims of anything. And if we're not victims, that means we can't blame anyone else for our life experience, right? Like, oh, I've only mm -hmm. been able to achieve this much or make this much money or my relationship, you know, it's okay. It's not what I want it to be, but you know, I, I guess I'll just live with it. And we don't have to live with things that are dysfunctional that don't right. serve us. So the idea that everything is co-creational even takes our curiosity a step further, because I believe that all change begins with the invitation, the invitation to understand something more, experience something more, embody something more, create something more in our lives. Right. And if we think of everything being co-creational, I mean, he, even you and I having this conversation came from the co-creative efforts of our parents. Yeah. Right. Right. And so from that perspective, and we think about the cosmos, we think about the universe, right? These are known facets of reality. Right. Well, if we invite in the idea that the universe is constantly offering us the most benevolent experience of life, right? All yeah. ways to delightfully surprise us. Well, then we can become much more invitational with our lives. Right. And 
when we can become curious in the invitation and start to say, well, like, why am I really here? What is my path? What is my purpose? Right. What do I love? What brings me joy? Do I feel fulfilled? Are my relationships sacred, intimate, nurturing? Am I living my greatest health? Right. Vitality, joy. So you're basically saying, you're saying that we come from an environment. So, and we're, we're taught a specific way of thinking, living, doing everything. And we are so much more than what we're actually taught in the environment that we grew up in. And we need to get out of that box. And we really need to start really listening to what our inner self is saying and understand more about, because we're worth so much more. Is that basically the meaning that you're trying to get across? Exactly. Because ultimately, think about it. You can move to 15 different places, but you still take yourself wherever you go. Right. So those patterns in your life that keep showing up are going to show up whether you live in Asheville, New Jersey, California, Texas, or Morocco. Right. Right. And so those patterns, so especially those subconscious patterns that come from our past experience mm -hmm. are ways that we continue to define our lives until we can question them, become curious. And in the curiosity, we can create change because we start to understand that we are incredibly powerful. And if I'm going to spend every morning in a sacred intentional practice where I'm inviting in the universe right? I'm inviting in my, whether it's my spiritual teachers or angels or whatever the higher power is with my terminology, right? And I am comprehending that this life is co-creational, that right. I don't have to do everything myself, that I am supported, that I am guided, that I am blessed, that I am protected. I am encouraged to become the best embodiment of myself that I can possibly be and ultimately live the life I was born to live. Now, how does a person that wants more than what they have, like step one, what do they do? Like, how do they go to the next level? Like they want, they want more, but they only have, they've won't, they only been taught so much, but they, they want something different. How would you get them out of that structure of thinking and, and living a certain life? How, what's the next step? How do you get them to that next step so they could start really fulfilling who they are and the power within them? So one of the things that is such a powerful, potent practice that's very easy, easy and you can create a habit around it. Because remember, when we create a habit, we can either have healthy habits, right? Or ones right. that are so healthy. Yeah. So when we can create this simple practice, it starts to change our lives so quickly and so dramatically that it almost seems miraculous. So think about this. So in, in those very early moments when you wake up in the morning, right? right. Your brain is moving from the delta, the theta, the alpha to the beta right brain waves right yeah. beta being you're mentally alert you're mm -hmm. active you're engaged you're active and ready to go for the day yeah. right but <laughs> in those states particularly theta particularly alpha your your mind is incredibly receptive and malleable in particular not only your conscious mind but your subconscious mind Right. Because even though we may or may not realize it, our subconscious mind that is based on any unresolved pattern of trauma or unresolved emotion is still very active in our creation of life. Yes. And so because we have this malleable sense in these early hours, when we can become invitational in that times, like I am inviting in the most benevolent experience of this day. I am inviting the universe to right. surprisingly delight me in all ways of abundance. I'm calling upon all of the cosmic benevolent and earthly benevolent, benevolent forces to bless me, to protect me, to guide me. When we in particular are in calling in, right? We're calling in our intentions. Right. And our intention is when we can harness the power of the present moment with our desire and we activate the brain and the mind to focus on that, 
right? right. So affirmation, like I have some of these lovely little cards, right? Yes. And so this one is, I am vibrant, strong, clear, and connected. Right. Your affirmation may be something completely different. It may be something that you craft for yourself in the moment. But when you use this early morning time that's so precious, it is like working with clay that's soft. Right. So this is how you start to pave your way of the highest uh, purpose and experiences to unfold. So imagine you have maybe a meeting or you have something happening in your family Well, you're going to invite intentions that bring harmony and wholeness and nurturing to that situation. You're always going to use it in a positive affirmation because that is what the mind is going to focus on. And right. the mind is going to focus on that until it becomes a reality. And so then you start to realize, okay, I've invited in this experience of success in the meeting today or right. of healing in a communication with a loved one. Right. And, and so you've invited that in and then suddenly you have an experience that synchronistically lines up with that in a way that perhaps you wanted, but you couldn't even have thought it to yeah. be as magnificent as it unfolded. Right. right. And so this is how synchronicity starts to line up. This is how we really start to tune in, to tap into the innate power that is within us, to unlock it, to bring it forward, to not only transform some of our past patterns that don't serve us, past right. patterns of limitation, but really illuminate our highest path forward. Now you talk about detox. Now there are very many forms of detox. Now are you are express you ex you talk about it in the book. Now when you talk about detox, explain what your version of detox and how you detox yourself and your body. So this is such an important point because a lot of people have detox. So it sounds like a negative thing. Like oh I have to detox. Does that mean I did something bad? But in truth, we're detoxifying in each moment through our breath, right? As we're yeah. expelling CO2. So when we think about sustainable healing, when we think about personal growth, when we think about self-mastery or living the life of our dreams, right? Our, our passion, our purpose in life, um, that's when the detox, nourish and activate phase come in from my book. So, right. so let's look at detox for a moment, because it's not just what we put in our body, right? It's not mm -hmm. just what we put in that um, maybe our diet doesn't have the wholesome foods that uh, we need. Maybe we have substances that we're putting into the body to self-medicate, to numb, mm -hmm. forgetting that our bodies are really these temples that carry our light and yes. our spirits. Right. And so, and maybe it's things that we drink that maybe um, have chemicals or mm -hmm. high levels of sugar right. or other toxins, right? So there's, there's detox from those aspects, but it's so much more than that because how about how we talk about ourselves to mm -hmm. ourselves, right? How about how we feel about ourselves, right? Places of heaviness, old patterns mm -hmm. of emotional interaction, emotional reactions. What about our belief systems? Do they mm -hmm. serve us? You know, do, where's our glass ceiling for what we think we can achieve in our lives? Right. Is it right here? Is it right here? Or does it not exist at all? Right. So, so when we thought, think about detoxification, um, it's, it's more than just the cellular consciousness, right? And of course, that's imperative for us to be able to detoxify. But if you've seen, there are many people that will, oh, I'm doing a cleanse, I'm doing a detox, right? And so you, you know them and you're like, wow, that's really awesome. Maybe I wish I could do all those detoxes. Yeah. But you see, they still have the same patterns that keep showing up in their lives. Yes. So it's not just the physical detox. It's the oh. psycho spiritual, it's the mental, it's the emotional, it's the energetic, because all of that is carried within us as well. Yes. It's like this. So imagine you go to your favorite grocery store. What's your favorite store, Stacey, where you live? Where you oh, do my favorite grocery store? Yeah. 
I love Sam's Club because I can okay. get the best for your, for your yes. dollar. <laughs> so much at Sam's Club. I love it there too. So you go there and you have an infinite um, budget for your spending. Mm -hmm. You're getting all of your favorite foods and um, beverages and maybe supplements and maybe lotions and maybe books, maybe clothes, all of the things that, you know, really honor your being, your temple, your body, your mind, your spirit, your emotion, right. all of who you are. And then you take them home and you open the door to your house and your house is not just dirty, but it's cluttered. There's stuff everywhere. Right. And, and you're like, Oh, well, that's frustrating. Let me just get to the kitchen. Let mm -hmm. me get the stuff in the fridge. And then you open the fridge, but the fridge has those mystery foods in there and vegetables and fruits that have been in there a little too long. Right. So how, where is the space? for you to put all of this beautiful new food. And not just that, if you're gonna put fresh fruits and vegetables into an environment where food is already breaking down, that means what you put in there is gonna break down even more quickly. Yes. Right? So we have to cleanse out, we have to clear the clutter in our closets, in our desks, in our minds, in our beings. And let's face it, we are at this pinnacle of mood-based discontent where, where our emotions were so, so many of us are just right on the edge of feeling like we're breaking down. Yeah. And so, so all of these things that are in the way that are causing us greater consternation or greater heaviness or greater draws, we have to let them go to be able to move forward. We have to let them go to be able to create the space within us for the life that we dream and desire. Right. To live, right? And that's where the, the nourish phase comes in, have how we really love and care for ourselves, how we practice um, intentional um, sacred acts of forgiveness, of compassion. Yeah, love, but an honoring, right, and blessing, but starting with ourselves, because this is where it starts. Now, when you were going through all that, and you when you came from a family that was dysfunctional, your stress level was causing you illness. How you know there are so many people out there that develop low self esteem from this and don't think they're capable of change. They yeah. don't think that they can actually achieve. The, you know their desires that they have in the back of their head so how does how do you convince somebody that is overwhelmed that even when we talk about detox and cleansing they have so much junk you know in their lives that when you talk about cleansing the mind the body and the soul they get overwhelmed because they just don't know where to begin how do you you know one get that person to believe yes you can change and two how do you teach them to slowly cleanse out their mind and their body and connect with their soul so they can get the power to get to that next level that you're describing? Well, this is such an important question because we know that we can, there's a, a saying, we can only lead the horse to water, can't make right. it. Very and true. so when someone's mind is closed, you can't just force something in, right? Exactly. It's like that old adage when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Right. And so when we have individuals in our lives that we really love, but aren't open to change, then all we can do is love and accept and embrace mm -hmm. and hold a place of compassion. Right. And envision them being held and protected by the light of divine consciousness. Very good point. And, and when we can do that, that actually frees us as well, right? Yes. Because we know that everyone has their own time and mm -hmm. their own path of awakening and healing and transformation and growth. And we don't have to, we can't control everything, right? right. To, to be in surrender, surrender. Wow, what, a, what an incredible life teacher. Because yeah. how many of us go through life white knuckling things, right? Like myself yeah. included, like such a great con over controller. 
Yeah. Right. But, but how, what does that come from? That comes from being young in dysfunctional environments and having to control to create safety. Right. And then those patterns, those habitual patterns imprint and we continue them until we're ready to release them. Right. So for those that are ready to step onto the path in a deeper way of their own healing journey, but don't know where to start. I always say that simple is more right. effective because here's the thing, human nature. Um, what happens when we like, oh, okay, it's January. I'm going to exercise eight times uh, in the next four days or like something right. that's just not even manageable or yeah. I'm going to start this new nutritional um, supplement or this diet. And, you know, we really kick the regime up <laughs> 55 notches. Yeah. Well, when something isn't manageable and we get overwhelmed, what do we do? Nothing. Nothing. We, break we don't down. do anything. Stop. Yeah. So when we can make it um, easy for ourselves, we know that that's effective and we know we can do the same for our loved ones that are, um, taking the first steps on their journey, whether it's with a great book or here, this is a beautiful piece of music, mm -hmm. right? Music is incredibly, um, evocative. It is, right. it, it helps to not only release dopamine, like feel good chemicals in the brain, but uh, very much a part of our increased neuroplasticity. Yeah. Uh, and the same with aroma, with scent, right? right. And so, because, and this is one of the missions, right, in my personal mm -hmm. work. Yes. But imagine this. We have, um, all of us, every person on the planet has a small bottle of a pure essential oil in their pocket. Right. And in the moments when they start to feel stressed out, overwhelmed, anxious, sad, just disconnected or flat out scattered. Yes. Taking it out and inhaling it is not just because this smells good. Right. It's because of the powerful connection between the sense of smell and the amygdala and limbic centers of the brain that regulate so much of our physiology, but specifically mood, memory, and emotion. And when we can inhale the right essential oils in the right formulation, mm -hmm. we can not only change how we feel in the moment, lifting our emotions, mm -hmm. but we can shift the trajectory of our emotional response. Right. So think about what a game changer that is. The more that you use the essential oils via inhalation, the more that you create these healthy habit patterns to shift your trigger points. Oh, well, I used to get really um, overwhelmed or angry when my boss would send me an email or when this loved one called, or mm -hmm. when I felt like I was too heavy when I looked in the mirror. Right. But through this process of repatterning the neural yes. pathways, I don't feel that way anymore. I don't have that predisposition any longer. I don't have that same pattern. Now I'm much kinder. I'm much more gentle and loving with myself. And when I'm more gentle and loving with myself, then I see that my experiences every day just feel better. Right. Wherever I am. Now with essential oils, you they have essential oils that you can put in the diffuser. Sometimes you can put blends of different ones and make your own concoctions. And they also have the ones that you can roll on. Now, do you find one is more effective than the other? Or, you know, because sometimes they have certain um, essential oils that they tell you, don't put it on your skin. It's made for the diffuser. You know, do you find that one is more effective or what, what is your take on that? Typically when there's two things that happen when some oh, company is saying this is for the diffuser, don't put it on your skin. Number one, it's because the oils aren't pure essential oils. They're probably mm -hmm. synthetic. Okay. Be greatly irritating or two, um, any oil that you put on your skin needs to be diluted in a carrier oil first. Okay. So my first caveat is always know your supplier, know where your oils are coming from. Right. Um, because in this field, there is a tremendous amount of adulteration. And mm -hmm. if you're not working with a pure oil, then you can't expect the, the level of benefit, right? right. 
whether it's emotionally, whether it's from a physiological perspective or whether it's from a spiritual perspective as right. well. So the caveat is for sure, pure essential oils. And then via inhalation is where you get the, the most immediate effect, right? Because oh, okay. that brain aroma, um, smell, olfactory connection. Um, and where you get that immediate response from the nervous system. So think about it, when our stress response um, is so directly linked to the nervous system and nervous system imbalances, like what fatigue, headaches, yeah. tension, right? All of the ways that stress manifests in our body, including our immunity right. and so many other systems of the body. So when we can really start to regulate stress, regulate our emotions, our emotional responses to stress, because there's always going to be some degree of stress in oh, our yeah. lives, Definitely. internally and externally. But it's how we deal with that. It's how we respond to it. Right. And then when we can train ourselves to have a completely different response, more open, more receptive, calmer, the ability to adapt in each moment, right? We don't have to be that rigid, uh, rigid yeah. nature. We don't have to be white knuckled. Like, yep. okay, life is going to bring some challenges, right? And I'm always going to find the solution because the sol because I can do that, right? Yeah. Because I can connect with a sense of clarity within my being, and this is one of the tools mm -hmm. that I use to connect with that sense of calm, clear decisiveness that is available, available to me in each and every moment. Now, people who, you know, because essential oils is very popular, but a lot of people aren't well educated on what's pure, what's not, what to look for, what not to look for. For yeah. someone that doesn't know a lot about essential oils, how do they know a pure, a very, a, a good brand or, a, you know, a good company to buy and how do they know when one has artificial and synthetic, you know, um, ingredients in it? Yes. This is like the, again, another one of those trillion dollar questions. Because, yeah. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to start to answer it by telling you a little story. So when I started in this field in the early nineties, um, and I started first with herbs. Right. To, address my bronchitis and mm -hmm. in fact uh, that first formula is in the dna book for everyone that has these challenges yes from a respiratory perspective um but when i first found essential oils i found these nice little bottles at an herb store that mm -hmm. said pure essential oils i thought right. great i found essential oils and they smelled good to me and they made me feel good well, then I found another company and I said, well, these smell very different. The first oils I had were actually not essential oils at all. They were fragrance oils. Really? Yeah. And because this field is not regulated, um, you can put anything you want on the bottle. 100% pure and natural essential mm -hmm. oil. And there it is. And we all know that all essential oils are not created equally because if you That's do not have the relationship at say point A, where the essential oil is distilled, um, grown distilled, grown harvested and distilled. Think of all the points that it goes to, to become a product on the shelf at your favorite, and maybe at Sam's Club or, right. or your local health food store or wherever your vendor may be. So the science of adulteration is an enormous, you know, multi-billion dollar industry in its own regard. So knowing your supplier is primary. Now, the, the next caveat that I will say to that is that there, is, there are a few things more powerful than educating yourself and building relationship with the essential oils. And what I mean by that is if you're really serious about integrating the essential oils, which are the most potent form of plant medicine mm -hmm. into your day-to-day -day life for yourself, your family, and your loved ones. Um, obviously start by educating, reading, right? From right. Um, repu reputable, reputable authors. Mm -hmm. And then also go out and buy a small amount of your favorite essential oil. Maybe it's lemon, maybe it's lavender, um, you know, maybe it's geranium by a very small amount from three different companies and compare them. 
and start to smell them and invite in an intimate relationship with the plant, with the oil, where it can begin to communicate to you, right? Right. There are things that you will learn in that way that you will never read in a book, even mine even mine. And so with that, you'll also start to build your own lexicon of scent. Now for me, through all of these 25 plus years, um, through going, spending many, 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 many dollars and much money on education. um, Now, when I smell something that's synthetic, every time it hits a certain part of my nose, right? Yes. So, so building these skills or building this muscle uh, Mm -hmm. is so important. So some other caveats are going to be, make sure that the bottle is in a a dark bottle, make sure that the Latin name is included, make sure that it tells you the country of origin, what part of the plant is distilled. Um, and that, you know, straight flat out, if you're paying just a few dollars for a pure essential oil, it's probably not a pure essential oil. Okay. Right. Because, you know, rose oil, a pure rose auto this size Mm -hmm. is generally over $200. Wow. And very few people have smelled true rose oil because most of what's out there is synthetic. Yes, because I've, I've purchased, you know, essential oil and I actually got a headache from it. So I knew right away, it's yes. not, this yeah. is not pure, yeah. this is not good, you know, because it's not going to give me a headache from using it, obviously. Exactly, exactly. There's a t- tremendous amount of information on my website, the soulinstitute.co, on our blog, many articles that I've written of how you can uh, kind of go a little bit in more detail of how to source essential oils. Um, And of course, I have a a brand called High Vibe Aromatics of curated essential oils and formulas, um, and which is a wonderful resource. But I always, as an educator and as a teacher, it's so important to build relationship with the plant because that's something that lasts a lifetime. Oh, definitely. 100%. Now you have a shop on your website, so they can they can purchase the, the yeah. essential oils on your your website. Yes. Oh, that's, that's great. That's you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you talk about quantum living, and you talk you have also a quantum community. Can you explain to people that are not familiar with quantum living what exactly it is? Yes. So quantum living um, is really about how we can take any and all aspects of our lives where we're just surviving, right? Like I'm just making it through. I'm just making ends meet. I'm in survival mode. Um, We know when we make decisions from that place, they aren't, they don't typically serve our highest good. Right. Um, And, and what levels of um, stress come come with being in survival mode and the truth is we've all had uh, traumatic experiences we've all had adversity in our lives because adversity is builds wisdom right i mean think about the diamond right beautiful Mm -hmm. diamonds how are they formed they are formed through pressure and so we are very similar in that way is that the adversity, the pressure that we experience in our lives creates the opportunity to refine and remember the brilliance, the beauty, the power that exists within us. And right. our lives are really this opportunity to polish ourselves as these diamonds, right? Yeah. Let go of what no longer serves us, right? right? Think about that, the polishing process. And so the quantum community is where we invite all of you, wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in your path of awakening and transformation and self-mastery, come join us to be in this web of high vibrational light of unconditional love so you can remember that you are the diamond, that you are the one that you have been waiting for. Yeah. And quantum living is where we're really taking those patterns of surviving and turning them into a life of thriving for, for the expression of not only our greater authentic truth, but our freedom, 
our sovereignty so we can be that change that we wish to see in the world around us. Right. So the quantum community, uh, which is you'll see on the website at the Soul Institute. Um, dot co is a place that you can join in you get this beautiful ebook on four tools for spiritual growth like essential oils wow. like affirmations like crystals and then you have access to the school's alchemy library so we have four tiers there's the alchemy for all seekers Mm -hmm. and it's meditation alchemy crystal insight and wisdom essential oil alchemy and formulas practical alchemy and so if you join at the all seekers level, which is free, you get to go in and experience all of this wisdom and divine knowledge in one place. Right. Because as we're growing, as we're evolving, as we're transforming, we, we need tools to work with, right? And Absolutely. we have curiosity. And yeah. so we want to know about essential oils and we want to know about crystals and we want to know about meditation. But if we have to go to all of these sources, whether it's a book or a website or down the rabbit hole of social media, right. gosh, we come back out. We don't even know if we've gotten what we were looking for. Exactly. So way, the Alchemy Library has everything in one place. You can join at the free uh, membership tier or you can join at three other monthly tiers to get more alchemy more information more meditation more essential oil information to deliver to your inbox with the membership plan and some other goodies and benefits of that as well wow that's wonderful now tell me more about your book because your book is amazing i read it and i loved it i thought it was fabulous Thank so you. tell people you know a little about it that don't know much about what it it, it you know is so the book is really this revolutionary guide to self-mastery, to mm -hmm. transformation, to healing at the DNA level, to heal that trauma that we all carry and that many of us have carried generationally. Right. And, and of course, the title Detox, Nourish, Activate has the connection to DNA, but also three phases, right? Because it's mm -hmm. a system um kind of guide if you will to the first the detox like we talked about nourishing we touched upon those practices of mm -hmm. self-care to activate what activate and unlock the power the quintessence that is held within us right, right. so we can thrive in all facets of our life whether it's abundance or prosperity or uh, vitality right yeah. clarity in relationship and beyond our relationship right. everything i think is relationship to some degree though um and and so we've turned it energy mood and love why because it relates to those three primary organs right. so energy to the adrenal system mm -hmm. which is so important we know how many of us are walking around with some degree of adrenal fatigue right yeah. so oh, yeah. adrenal system connecting to the root chakra uh, connecting to our energy and of course what mood connecting to the brain and nervous system the the brain our super computer yeah connecting to higher levels of consciousness of spirituality of divine communion and then we know what the the heart for love yeah. and how we can address it not just from the physiological perspective but all of the emotions that are held within the heart because how can we live fully if our hearts are closed oh definitely right and how can yeah. we live with our hearts open if we're carrying the pain of the past exactly exactly so, so the book covers all of these wonderful discovery dives so you can get radically honest with yourself yeah. understand your journey understand your treasure map and then come into each system of the adrenals, the heart and the brain to detox, nourish and activate with 11 different alchemical interventions. And this is, I think, one thing that you know, I've never seen before where we've got the essential oils, we've got the herbs, we've got the meditation, we've got the vibrational aspects, right. we've got the crystal healing, we have the nutrition, we have the mudras. So it's all right here for you to say, okay, these are the modalities that resonate with me. And this is how I'm going to apply them because here in the book, there's formulas and there are pathways and very clear, accessible um, 
and consumable bits of wisdom and action steps to implement them in my day-to-day life. Right. I think that's excellent. When I read your book, I, what I loved about it, it was you explained it very clearly and it was very detailed, you know, so you, and you gave people step-by-step advice on how to, how to get to that point from detox and to nourishing to actually, you know, actually understanding your inner self and how to get the, basically the junk out, detoxify in yourself yeah. and get into that next step in life where you could actually understand what's going on in your life and then let in the universe come in and growing to be a better person. So it, it's an amazing book. It's well, an amazing thank book. You. You're so kind, Stacey. <laughs> so where, where can people find this book? So if people want to read it, where can they find it? Sure. So you can go right to my website, the soulinstitute.co. And there is a section for the DNA book that you can either purchase from my site signed, or you can go right to Amazon. Um, or you can go to barnesandnoble.com. And if you're overseas, you can go to uh, aonbooks.co.uk, where uh, my publisher is in London. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of places that you can buy the book. That's awesome. So before you go, is there anything else that you'd like to like let people know? Um, anything special that you want to touch base on? Yeah, I would love to invite all of your listeners to... Um, my retreat, I actually have two. One is coming up in Southern France, the Mary Magdalene retreat next month, uh, which is a, a quite a bit. Uh, we're wrapping that up. It's just about full. But the mm-hmm. Moon, North Carolina retreat at the amazing world-class Art of Living Retreat Center, uh, which is beautiful because it's on 360 acres wow. of nature. And they've got a world-class Ayurvedic spa and they make the vegetarian sattvic cuisine from their garden. Um, and myself and my co-leads, uh, Patsy Balaki and Carla P- Perez, have just come from our own little mini retreat in the Highlands to put together the program that is going to be absolutely life elevating, combining, of course, the alchemy, the psycho-spiritual, the DNA level clearings and activations, but also intuitive feng shui and how it connects to our physiology and how it connects to our ability to magnetize greater abundance in life. And um, with Carla Perez teaching from yoga and mudras and breath work and her sound bowls for sound baths, it's going to be such a beautiful four days. So I would love for any of your um, wonderful listeners to join. More information is on the soulinstitute.co or divinefeminineretreats.org. That's amazing. I am very excited to learn more about those and I can't wait. You know, I'm really seriously considering trying to go to one of those retreats because I definitely feel I can get a lot of benefit out of it because, you know, sometimes life, life stresses, you know, getting caught up in all, you know, you know, the devices and, you know, the, you kind of lose yourself a little bit, you know, between work, between life, between, you know, all the devices that we constantly get addicted to and we go on, we lose, we lose our inner self that, you know, we, we forget who we are, our purpose in life. And, you know, it's nice to connect because I think it does bring out the empowerment within us. You know, when we can connect with ourselves, we become stronger beings and better beings. And we get, we, we feel good about ourselves and we become better people. And therefore we can help people around us as well. It's so true. And, you know, when we come together in sacred community and we can be vulnerable and we can be open, we heal, we transform and we rise together. Yeah. And then we, we um, return back to life, revitalized, reset, renewed. And that is going to be the beautiful experience of these four days. So I certainly hope that you join us, Stacey, bring your bestie. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, it's going to be a beautiful journey. Uh, I look forward to it. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I just love everything you had to say. And I'm so glad you could educate others and help others. You are amazing, I have to say. And your book is amazing. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. It is such my pleasure to be here and talk with you today. And you're wonderful.